Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. But you've got to understand that every time you ask God to give you more of something, he's going to have to deal with you about something else. To gain something, you're going to have to lose something. You know, like lose the attitude. You want to be faithful. Faithful men and women get promoted. Faithful people are in for the long haul. Let's look at Proverbs 28, 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessing. In every way. You'll be blessed in every way. What have you been faithful with? Have you been faithful with your finances over the years? Have you been faithful to spend some, save some, and give some? Or have you just spent it all? Have you been faithful with your health? Do you take care of yourself or do you just abuse yourself? And Act like there's no end to energy. Have you been faithful over the possessions that God has given you, or does your automobile look like a trash can? You guys are a little bit quieter than is comfortable. <laughs> Have you been faithful? Faithful? You see, when you're faithful, then you will abound with blessings. But see, faithfulness literally means that you find out what is right and you do it over and 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 over. Do you know how many people reach retirement age and live in absolute fear because they don't know what they're going to do financially for the rest of their life? But there's lots of young people here, a lot of young people here last night. And you know, if, if a person when they were 18 years old started to just set aside 10% of everything they made, of course 10% for God, 10% just for savings. And if you did that consistently when you were my age, you would have enough that you would never have to worry the whole rest of your life if you're faithful if you're faithful amen I can tell you that my husband has been very faithful in his management of the ministry's finances and one of the things that I enjoy telling our partners not to brag in any way or to say that another way to do it is wrong but we have never paid one penny in interest for anything. Everything that this ministry has, Dave has saved the money and we've paid cash for it. Our headquarters is paid for. Every piece of equipment is paid for. We just had to update all of our TV equipment to HD equipment to keep up with the standard of what's going on today and to be ready for the future. We saved the money to pay for that. You don't have to live under financial pressure all your life if you'll be faithful with a little, then God will make you ruler over much. Now I know some of you are like, move on to another subject. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> well, somebody's going to have to talk to you about it sooner or later. Amen? Proverbs 28, 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he who makes haste to be rich at any cost shall not go unpunished. A faithful man is in for the long haul. He's willing to gather little by little. The Bible says God delivers us from our enemies little by little. 2 Corinthians 3.18, as we faithfully continue in the word of God, we are changed into his image from glory to glory to glory. Not all at once, but little by little by little by little. Yeah, you know, I've overcome so many things now, and our ministry's successful, and we're enjoying life, but I'm 32 years into this now. Thousands of hours studying the Word of God, thousands of hours in prayer. 
wanting to throw in the towel so many times I don't even I lost count a long time ago but I'm here to tell you that if you will just stick with it and not give up and keep doing what's right and keep doing what's right and keep doing what's right do what's right when nobody else around you is doing what's right do what's right when it doesn't feel right do what's right when it doesn't even look like you're getting a right result and if you keep it up and keep it up and keep it up and keep it up and keep it up all of a sudden one day that stronghold the enemy's had over your life will just go and that'll be it be faithful you know when I when I think about the different men in the Bible I just there's no way to do this justice in the amount of time that I have here in this session but listen to this and I'll, I want you to really think about this Jesus was 30 years old when he began his public ministry and the Bible talks about Jesus when he was eight days old and he was dedicated the next time we hear anything about Jesus he was 12 years old what happened during those 12 years what was going on you know what the Bible says he grew <laughs> I can feel the pain and then when he was 12 years old they went for a census or something and when they left to go home they thought that he was with them and he wasn't with them he decided it was time for him to be about his father's business and he was staying there teaching in the temple and so his mom came back and got him and she was all worried and upset and you know how could you do this to us and well don't you know I must be about my father's business well he apparently was a little bit ahead of himself because she took him home And the next time we hear anything about Jesus, he's 30. <laughs> An 18 year gap where we hear nothing, but I can tell you something was going on. And you know what the Bible says? He grew. <laughs> I mean, because I've been through this, when I read that, it's just like, ooh, my gosh, I can feel it. And every person in this book, that is anybody that we look to and respect today has a similar testimony John the Baptist about 25 years the best I can figure in the wilderness alone what in the world went on out there all I know is he came out yelling repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He had some kind of encounter with God out there in that wilderness. And he came out the forerunner of Jesus Christ. You know, these things are very important to me. And it's very important to me that I can try to get this across to you. Because there are potentially great men and women of God sitting in this room today. But you have to understand, please understand me. You don't want to be anywhere if you don't have the roots in Christ and the character to keep you there during storms. What if you're in a key position and some huge temptation comes your way? What if you're over a lot of money in a business or a ministry or whatever and you're tempted to fool around with it and use it for things you shouldn't be using it for oh eventually you'll get caught and when you do it's going to make a big mess and it's just going to cause problems not only for you but for everybody how many of you are fed up with hearing story after story of people that you thought you could look to and admire and trust and find out that they were nothing but big phonies and all the time there's all this junk going on in their lives and we cannot become like that we are in the world but not of the world and we cannot get like that it is imperative that we represent Christ in a way that is going to honor him David 20 years after he was anointed finally 
got to wear the crown. 20 years, not a week or two weeks or three months, 20 years. And most of those 20 years, Saul was trying to kill him. And he remained faithful. Wouldn't talk against him, wouldn't move his hand against him, even when he had opportunity to kill the very man that was trying daily to kill him. He said, I will not touch God's anointed. He knew that God could promote him if that was what he wanted. Abraham, 20 years from the time he got the promise of Isaac to the time Isaac was born. Are you hearing me? 20 years. And some of you are like been believing God for something for three months and you're like, I am so sick and tired of waiting. <laughs> Come on. I got you, didn't I? It's like, well, God, I've been believing for a whole year. <laughs> when, Joyce, when? When is it going to happen? When you're ready. I'm ready. I am ready. <laughs> well, maybe not so ready as you think you are. I'm going slow. I know it's hard to get this. Joseph, 13 years in prison for something he didn't do. We never see a time when Joseph wasn't helpful, <laughs> kind, always ready to forgive those who hurt him. Why did that happen to him? He said, he said himself, but this came about that I might be in a position to help people in such a time as this. Moses, 40 years in the wilderness. Paul, 17 years when nobody really knew anything about him. And then all of a sudden, I just laughed my head off. When our ministry first got popular because of being on TV and God's hand was on it and people were receiving it and liking it, people would say to me, where did you come from? All of a sudden, man, everywhere, everywhere. You're on radio, you're on television, you can't hardly watch television. Where did you come from? I thought, I came from somewhere, but it was nowhere you would have wanted to have been. I was, I was in the desert. Hanging onto the legs of the furniture to keep from running away from God. I actually did that. What happened to all these men and women during those times? They grew. <laughs> you understand it, don't you, Darlene? <laughs> How many of you understand this? You've been through enough that you get it. It's like, oh my gosh, I can feel their pain right now. It's like, oh my goodness. Be faithful. Keep your commitments. That's part of faithfulness. Be faithful in prayer. Be faithful in the Word of God. You can't just read a chapter a day and think that's all it's going to mean. Or go hear a little 20-minute sermonette on Sunday morning and think, well, I don't understand why I'm having problems. I go to church every week. I just don't understand why I'm having problems. I go to church every week. You can sit in church till your bottom's flat. <laughs> it takes more than sitting and letting somebody else spoon feed you everything. You got to do some digging. Keep your commitments. I did a book signing a few weeks ago. One lady came up to me during the book signing. She handed me an envelope and she said, I need to apologize to you. She said, I committed to be a partner with your ministry and I didn't keep my word. And God's been really dealing with me about it. And so these are all the months that I missed and I wanted to catch up. Now, I was so proud of that woman. And I can tell you, I didn't look in the envelope. I don't know what her partnership was. I don't know if it was $5 a month. So the total amount in there was $25. I don't know if it was $1,000 a month. I couldn't have cared less what the amount was. The thing that I was so happy for 
was that woman was seeing a principle that if she didn't see that, she'd never make it to the fulfillment of her destiny. And that is, you keep your word, and if for some reason you can't, then you go and explain yourself. You don't just ignore it. It's part of being faithful. Not just emotionally, oh yeah, you can count on me, pastor. I'll be there Saturday for the work day. Praise the Lord, count on me. Then Saturday morning you wake up and say, I don't really feel like going over there this morning. So you don't call, you don't show up. When somebody does say, where were you? You make some kind of silly excuse that makes no sense at all when really the truth is you were just lazy. I'm preaching better than you're acting. We need to keep our word. Be committed to a standard of values in your own heart between you and God. I've decided in my life that, I mean, there's a whole bunch of things, but one of the things I'll tell you is this is my standard for my life. I will do my absolute best in every situation to never mistreat anybody. Because I can tell you that God values every single person. And nothing aggravates me any more than a person in a position of authority who mistreats people maybe under their authority or people that they think are unimportant. And if I do get in the flesh and mistreat somebody, the minute that God convicts me, I will go back and apologize. That's my standard. I am not going to let myself get by with that. Thank you. You got to have some standards in your life and don't think those standards won't be tested because they will be. How easy is it to say, well, God, I want to be in ministry or I want to own my own business or I'd like to be the worship leader or Whatever it is, you know, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a ministry goal, but, you know, we want promotion in life. We want promotion financially. We want promotion within our social circles. Everybody loves promotion, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's part of the drive that God has put in us. We all should have a little bit of healthy ambition in us as long as it's not with wrong motives. But you've got to understand that every time you ask God to give you more of something, He's going to have to deal with you about something else. To gain something, you're going to have to lose something. You know, like lose the attitude. <laughs> when you tell God, I want to be a worship leader. When you tell God, I want to sing on the worship team. When you tell God, I want to own my own business. When you tell God, I want to be promoted in my company, you're asking for something, and I can tell you that something in your life will have to take place to prepare you for that thing you're asking God for. And this is where we lose it. Everybody's got a big case of the gimmies. Gimme, 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 gimme. More, 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 more. Gimme, 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 more, more, more. Gimme, 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 more, more, more. And God wants to. He wants to give you all those things that you want. And see, honestly, even those of you that maybe are in troubled relationships and you like, you so much want this other person to change. Well, you guys are getting smart. You know what I'm going to say before I even say it now. You like so much want this other person to change. It's just like, it's like ripping your arm. God, they've got to change. <laughs> you know what? I can honestly and truthfully tell you, you don't have to worry about them at all. <laughs> all you have to do is ask God what you need to change. Right. And obviously, pray for the other person. Pray for them. But... Just take care of yourself. And so God has just taught me, don't worry about what I'm telling other people to do or not telling them to do. You just do what I'm telling you to do. 
We are all individuals before God, and He does not deal with all of us the same way. Stop using the excuse, well, I don't know anybody else that's doing this. Well, then you should be the first one. John 21, 15, Peter, do you love me? <laughs> yes, Lord, you know I love you. Next verse, Peter, do you love me? <laughs> yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him the third time, the third time, Peter, do you love me? <laughs> yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And it said, and by now it's beginning to kind of bother Peter that the Lord's asking him the same thing over and over and over. And then verse 18, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, when you were young, you girded yourself, put on your own belt or girdle and walked about wherever you pleased to go. So let me make it short and simple. He said to Peter, okay. We've got it established, you love me. Now, here we go. Up until now, you've done exactly what you wanted to do. <laughs> Next verse. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will put a girdle about you and carry you where you do not wish to go. And he said this to indicate by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. He was just basically telling him, you know, Peter, I want to use you in a mighty way, but you're going to go through some rough stuff. I need you to stay the course and do what I'm asking you to, and it's not all going to be easy. Now, look at this. And after this, he said, follow me. But Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, the one who had also leaned back on his breast at supper and said, Lord, who is it? that is going to betray you. Now that was John the Beloved. And this is my own opinion, but I, I think probably, I think John got on Peter's nerves. <laughs> I mean, I just know Peter's personality because I'm kind of like that. And you know, John's just kind of. <gasps> and then to call yourself the disciple whom Jesus loves. And he did it over and over. I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. However, there is a great message there because Peter talked all the time about how much he loved Jesus. John talked about how much Jesus loved him. John was the only one. He outlasted all of them. They tried to boil him in oil and couldn't even kill him. So there, that revelation of God loves me, that was a powerful thing in his life. Peter was always saying stuff but not backing much up. Let's go back to this. So Peter's like... Well, what about this man? <laughs> if I'm going to have such a rough time, what about this man? What's going to happen to him? And Jesus said, if I want him to stay, survive, and live until I come back, what is that to you? What concern is that of yours? You follow me. Stop worrying about what God's doing with everybody else. Come on, I said, stop worrying about what God's doing with everybody else. I said, stop worrying about what God's doing with everybody else. Each one of us is going to stand before God and give an account of our life on Judgment Day. He's not going to ask you about somebody else. He's only going to ask you about you. And you need to be able to say, God, to the best of my ability, I followed you. And I can tell you, if you'll do that and be faithful, you will be promoted. You will have joy. You will have peace. You will have victory and success. You will have favor. God will put you in places that you could never have imagined being in and give you things that you would never have thought that you would have had. But it's going to require faithfulness, and that means doing what's right over and 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 over. Amen. Well, God has a really good plan for our lives, but you know, it's only through our faithfulness, which is doing what's right over and over and over again, no matter how we feel, that we're finally able to live in the fullness of the plan that God has for us. You know, faithfulness is so important. The Bible says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. So even when you just see a little bit of what your whole dream is, that's enough to keep you encouraged to keep pressing on and being faithful to God. I honestly don't think that we hear enough about faithfulness today. And a faithful person is someone who just keeps doing what they know they're supposed to do. 
no matter what the results are. I always say that we can't outlast the devil. We can outlast our enemy by just continuing to do what we know that we should do, and then eventually I believe that he will give up and go aggravate somebody else that he can control.